and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as Four Kids at 147. And I'm gonna kit up another one of my little mini diamond paintings. Um, this one is a square and it's 15 by 15. Now I have, I know there was comments on some of the other videos that people necessarily wouldn't kit up for the purpose of a small one. And sometimes I don't. For a small one, I would just work by colour um, and do all of that colour before moving on to the next. But I do quite enjoy the kitting up process um, and I have found that, sorry, let me get all those out. Um, I have found that it, I, I tend to work on these over a couple of evenings. Um, so it is nice to have it, you know, all in one place because otherwise I'd still have to find a baggie to put the spares in before I could de-kit it and all that sort of stuff. So I'm quite enjoying doing them all together. So first things first, I'm just going to get the picture image cut down and yes, my trimmer blade is still not the best. I don't know whether I'd put one that I'd already used back in in with my spares, but I don't have another spare, so I'll make it work. Um, so I like to cut out the image because I'm using these small 28 trays again, um, but so that I don't get muddled up, I just put that in upside down, and then when I turn it over, I know what painting it's for. So I'm cutting up the inventory sheet anyway because I'm gonna use it for my stickers. So I want the symbols first up. So I want to cut as close as I can to the symbols. And this is just to make sure that the information that I want will fit on the width of these little containers. And then I want to cut down by the numbers as close as I can, bearing in mind that I have more space on the three digit numbers and less space on the four digit. Um, and for anybody that's asking, I am just using a Fiskars paper trimmer. Uh, they do a few different varieties and a few different sizes. I personally am using the 12 by 12, but that's because I do scrapbooking. Um, I don't think you'd need it for the purposes of diamond painting. You could get away with a smaller one. Um, so then I'm going to chop off the part at the top that I don't need and I'm also going to chop off the part at the bottom that I don't need. So all I have purely got now is the symbols and the numbers. Now one thing I do normally do when I first look at, which I've mentioned in other videos, and I've looked on this video, but I've not actually mentioned it, is I do check how many packs I've got of each because these containers will fit four packs. Um, now, the, on 3865, there is five. Because it's my last number, I'm not too bothered. I'll just put the spares in whatever container is next to it. Um, I do normally check that on video before I start, but my brain did it, it just didn't come out of my mouth. So the next thing um, is I'm going to get the sticker maker. Now this is a Xyron mini sticker maker. Um, this was bought for me by a subscriber. I have since found out due to fellow um, subscribers that you can actually get some of these in the UK. There is only one or two places that sell them, but you can get them. So that is amazing for my refill purposes. Um, but what this does is it turns my little piece of inventory sheet into a sticker. So it puts sticky dots on the back of it. And the, the top coat that I've just peeled off took away the excess sticky bits. So that's also why I do like to trim it down. Um, just to the size that I need before it goes in the sticker maker because then it uses less of the sticky stuff which means I have it for my next kitting up. Um, so far a lovely subscriber sent me the sticker maker and a spare refill and um, so far I'm still on the first one. I'm still going. 
so it does last a good while which is always a plus um, now I also have been kitting these up in a couple of different ways so I have been kitting them up where I use the symbols and put them in alphabetical and number order that makes sense and I have been kitting them up where I just put them in DMC number order either way doesn't really bother me um, I still you know I'm not talking big amounts of colours I think this one only had 18 colours um, de-kitting is easier if they're in DMC number order but working on it can be slightly easier if they're in number order um, so I've just been mixing it up so for this one because I do know that 3865 is not going to fit in one container for this one I'm going to do it in DMC number order and then my spares can just go in the one that's left over I am paying attention to the way these open or I'm trying to they should all be laid in the box in the right way um, it's normally only when you first purchase them that they're in different ways and I do try and make sure that I put them back in the right way but I've done it before and I've done it on camera so who's to say I'm not going to do it again and get it all wrong so what I'm doing now is basically taking the little stickers that I've made and putting them on the top of my tubs so this will tell me of course the symbol for the painting and the DMC code um, I do particularly like um, it when you get an inventory sheet. Um, making a sticker out of it is my favourite way of doing it. Um, and, and that's mainly because you get the colours behind the symbols as well. I know you can photocopy your canvas to get yourself a chart. Um, but my photocopier is one where you feed it in. Um, so the thickness of the canvas wouldn't work that way. I have been known to chop a canvas before and cut the key card off. Um, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. Because I don't have that many colours, I say it's only 18 in this painting, I'm just going to hunt for the number that I need. Um, quite often, I'll know what sort of colour it is, partly by the symbol and partly by doing diamond painting for over two years and cross stitch for years before that. So for example, we may all know that 310 is black, but I also straight away know that 414 is a gray. 451 is more than mid. So I don't know all the DMC numbers and their colors, but say doing diamond painting for two years and cross stitch for Many years before that, um, a lot of the colours are familiar to me. Though don't quiz me on them because I'm not saying that I can reel them all off one by one. So just quite simply tipping each of the numbers into the right one. Double checking of course the numbers as I go. Because if you make a mistake here, quite often you can have quite a bit of your painting before you realise. Um, it's always best to do double checking, cross checking, everything on a diamond painting as you're kitting it up so that when you actually get to do it, everything is a-okay. So I'm opening two bags at once where I can. Just because it's quicker um, though this is a very small painting so it's not going to take too much to kit this up at all I will be kitting up some big paint a bigger painting soon because I've nearly nearly finished my huge round painting um, and of course as soon as I finish that I need another main project 
I've actually been doing a section of my round painting followed by, so I've been doing a big chunk of the round painting, followed by doing one of these small ones. And then I've done another big section of my round and I've sort of worked that way. So I end up doing three or four days on my round, big round painting. And then I do one to two days doing a square depending on how much time I've got and how long it takes. And then I do three or four days on the big one and one or two days on the small one. And I'm that close to the end now. I've actually been able to work out the, the last two that I need to kit up, one of them, which is this, will actually work out perfectly. So I covered my big painting in these cover sheets sorry I'm just trying to get it from the pegboard behind um, I got them in this size and I actually cut them down lower so I actually do eight of these on my big one and then I move on to a small painting um, <coughs> and it works out absolutely perfect now so I have um, I have I've just finished my section of my round painting so I'm going to do this then I've got another section of eight and I'm going to do the next one that I kit up and then I have a smaller piece so it's actually not eight sections it's more like six because it's a strip of four and then a smidge and then that painting's done so I'll be ready to move on to kitting up one of my bigger paintings. I don't have any that are huge anymore that are like over 100 centimetres at the moment. Um, my daughter has one to do, but I don't. Um, so I'm hoping that I can, you know, have a period of time doing a batch of smaller-ish ones. I say smaller-ish. I'm probably still going to do a 40 by 40, but it's definitely smaller than one that's 100 by 50 or something along those lines. So that will be good. Um, so yeah, I'll probably move on to a different type of storage for my next one. I'm going to sort of decide on what storage I'm doing, depending on the painting that I'm kitting up. But for these small ones, there is no point in using more than this container that's, that's just 28. Okay, so I'm on to the last bag that I know full well, um, because I'm used to working with these containers, this is equal to five bags. And these containers only hold four comfortably. So I've opened two, I've tipped a section in and then the rest. And what I'll end up doing is I'll use this pot first and then I'll continue with the one on the symbol. So that is my diamonds kitted up for this one. Didn't take long at all. So I'm just going to prep my canvas, which also won't take long. I'm going to use the cover sheet that I've already got. And I think I'm pretty much going to cut a line that is roughly down the middle and I'm going to work on it in a section of four. I'm not sure if I caught that far end. Oh, I have. So I will fold that back to halfway, work on a, a section of four and then I'll peel the rest off. Um, I'll probably start from the bottom but Oh yes, definitely. With all that V, which is the white one, I'll get the bulk of that done and then I'll move over and do this other half. I do vary where I start and where I don't. Um, I could full, full well start on the top um, because even though I'm right-handed, I've got enough of this paper further down to be able to reach. Um, but I like to do the boring part of a picture first, not that the picture's boring, um, but I do like to do, I like, I like near the end, you know, especially on a big painting when you might be flagging a little bit, 
I like it to then be the interesting part that brings everything together. So the bottom part I want to do that has got a lot of the white colour and the branch. And then when I've done that half, I get to the fun part where I get to put the eye on the owls and stuff. In fact, I might even, when I'm doing it, start on this half so I get the tree and stuff and then I get to see the rest of the owl. I'll make me mind up when I get to it. But yeah, that's the canvas prepped and my beads prepped for another little mini diamond painting. So thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.